Hi everyone, today I'm going to give you a bit of a behind the scenes look at some of the progress I've been making with the Biogen add-on, specifically in relation to the first content pack that's coming soon. I think I've settled on a name for it, it's going to be called the Generators Lab, and the point about it is it's basically going to be a collection of different experimental node groups for geometry nodes to show you a variety of different things you can do with it. Now it is a complete work in progress and there's still a lot more I want to experiment with, so you'll notice that there aren't too many things on the screen here, but I'm going to show you some demonstrations to just give you an idea of the kind of potential for the types of things you'll be able to make, because I feel like this is one of those things as a developer where in our mind we can visualize like all the crazy potential for these different tools that we're making but other people that are looking at those tools can't necessarily see the same thing so the tutorial creator side of me is like oh that's a bit of a problem let's actually try and inspire people so before we start i'm going to show you this lovely piece of artwork by gabriel made with the assistance of the biogen add-on for concepting so hard surface concepting using it for idea generation using the hard surface faceting modes this is how i've always visualized biogen being used it's a tool to assist in the idea creation process as well as being a tool for making really cool effects which is kind of what we're seeing on the screen here. So there are a few major aspects of geometry nodes which I've been experimenting with over the last few days. One of them is voxels. I think there's so much potential behind voxel systems. One of the avenues I've wanted to explore in that regard is for using voxels to create hard surface grating effects as well as fabrics for like clothing as well as like netting and all sorts of other stuff. So let me take a look at one of my files. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got a few shapes here and uh, a material that I've got applied to them is kind of a metallic shape just to give you the idea that this is supposed to be like a metal sheet of some kind. Using the same principles for like scattering textures procedurally around objects like triplanar or through another scattering method, we can create geometry in thin air pretty much around any kind of mesh guide that you like. The density of the mesh created over the top of this is entirely up to your own control. So say that I've got the triplanar node here plugged into an image texture, the image being this cross here in the corner. So it's like our guidance image. Let's say I can decrease the scale or do it to something like three. Then all of a sudden that pattern stretches outwards again and it's an entirely three dimensional object because it's being made using voxels. Now voxels have a bit of a problem in the fact that they're not very clean, but we can always change that by say increasing the density of the voxels and reducing their radius and getting creative with all those values. But of course, the more intense the quality you're using, the lower the performance will be. You'll notice that as we go much, much higher with the density of this effect, you can still get something that's pretty interesting but close up it still looks a bit unconventional and clean but from a distance it's quite an impressive quality here now this is an effect that you could probably achieve with the traditional modifier stack using the wireframe mode it wouldn't look exactly the same but the power that we have here with the geometry nodes is we can replace the image being put into the image texture with absolutely anything we like so it's like having a wireframe modifier, but you can change the pattern to anything. Now that can be either a procedural pattern or a texture. Now again, in my Geometry Nodes Crash Course video, I gave you the demonstration of uh, using a circle instead of a cross, and I know I haven't been totally creative in preparing things. But just to give you the demonstration again, if I turn that down, now we're using circles as our wireframe pattern, if you want to think about it that way. Now to get a bit more creative and talk about potential, you can imagine this being used for things like chain mail. If you wanted to do like a really high quality fabric cape going down a character, you could make a custom pattern, like a 2D image pattern, and then have the voxel system use that as a guide to create mesh content there. If I come over to my second file here, you'll notice that there's a crosshair pattern. So this again demonstrates the same thing. And when I look at this, I think, hmm, okay, maybe metal fencing around a building, like some kind of like weird Victorian old building or something like that. So I like the potential voxel systems being used for this kind of thing. And again, like I said, entirely procedural using our triplanar node here. And also the scatter map, if we like, I can plug that in to get like a completely random distribution. And oh, a spoiler, here we go. We're starting to breach into the abstract artwork territory where you can take any mesh you like and create any pattern you like whatsoever around the surface. Because we're reading in from patterns, procedural and texture patterns, there is quite literally a limitless number of possibilities for patterns that you can make. Now the preset for this I've called Voxel Pattern, quite simple, and this is going to be one of the effects included in the paid pack, the Generators Lab. So I'm having a lot of fun playing with this. Now you can combine this with all sorts of other data like weight values to restrict where the effect is happening on an object. And again, this is a callback to the Geometry Nodes Crash Course video I did. So let's say, for example, you're making some kind of like zombie creature and you had the skin kind of like bubbling and mutating away, you can invent a mutational style like this and then just have it restricted to a certain part of the mesh by using those weight values. So again, there's a lot of interesting potential in using geometry nodes like this for artistic effects. Now, because Biogen is all about letting you apply geometry node styles to pre-existing objects to get interesting effects, I've added some new features to Biogen 9.1, which is not available yet, but I'm currently working on it to go alongside this new paid package. And with 9.1, 
7.1 of adding support for different types of surface effects. So if you remember in the original pack here, if we take a look, we have all these different types of effects you can put around an object, just basic artistry that can be applied to the surface. Some of them actually create voxel content around them, like the moss and mud features. The rest of them are just like scattering objects around. All of these import collections when you apply them. So there'll be like a collection that's made over here. So if I added the glass shards effect, it'd be a collection with the glass shards content inside of it. But what about geometry nodes effects that don't use collections? Well, version 9 by itself didn't support that, but version 9.1 will. So if I go over to Generators Lab again, here's one of my basic templates here for voxel surface. Notice that there's an S in brackets here. And what this means is simple or single, and it means that we can import that effect without there being any collections. This would be different from the overgrowth effect here, which does have a collection, which is why it's much more artistic. And again, you can make your own content packs for Biogen. So if you're experimenting with geometry nodes, this is something to keep in mind if you wanted to add it to the Biogen add-on for your own use or for your friends or to share it online, whatever you like. So just to give you a demonstration, if I add the overgrowth effect, Notice here that in the collections, we have the overgrowth collection there, and that's what it looks like. And if I add the voxel surface, make sure the object selected, then it adds the effect, but there's no collection added because if I open up the geometry nodes tree, it's just a single tree creating that effect. Now, I like the idea for this pack of having very simple template effects as well as complex artistic ones, because sometimes when you're making your own effects, you just want something simple to start from. So for, by having the basic voxel surface, just like over here where we have the voxel pattern, it gives us starting points. So if we wanted to do our own unique effects, then we can just do that without having to make those nodes from scratch or copy them over from something more advanced, which would ultimately clog up the file with a bunch of collections. Now, when you look at features and presets like this in isolation, they're interesting, but they're kind of impressive to a limited degree. Like, yeah, that looks kind of basic. I mean, it looks a bit like snow. We can see the voxel outlines there. Sure, there are parameters we can change, but you know, there's not much that can be done with it. Well, that's where you're wrong, kiddo, because this is where it gets weird. So if you want to make any kind of like funky, really abstract shapes, I'll give you a little demo of something you can do here. So I've got this voxel effect applied to this object, and I'm going to make sure that I apply these. So we're making the geometry real. So if we have a look at that here, we can see we have the geometry. And voxel effects by default aren't just one directional, so there's mesh content inside as well. So you can see that as I go under the surface here, we have the mesh content there underneath. But what happens when I apply a voxel pattern to this voxelized mesh content here? So what we're about to do here is one of the things that got people kind of really excited about Biogen back in the day for making motion graphics type stuff. Because if you layered up effects on top of other effects, then you've got some really unexpected and interesting results. So let me apply this now and go into my rendered view. Okay, that's quite an interesting shape. What's going on here? Well, we're taking our regular cross pattern and now we're just scattering it around all of this mesh content we've made. But this is being done using the triplanar node. And of course we can change the scale. So let me put it up to 10. Then we get like a much higher resolution version. I can also add more to the geometry as well. So if I increase the subdiv level before this effect, then we have more geometry for the geo nodes tree to work with. And I can also increase the quality of these voxels with this quality modifier value I've added. So if we click that, then it becomes slightly more refined, but I'm going to turn it down just where we're modifying other things. But because we have complete parametric control, we can change how things are mapped around the object. So if I give it no interesting mapping whatsoever, then we just have the cross being used to make this weird structure around the mesh. And again, we can adjust the scale so we can get all kinds of weird stretching effects. So you can go all alien and weird, however you like. But let's plug our scatter map node in. And here things are a lot more scatterbrained, like paint has been thrown around and suspended in time. I like this because this just feels really cool. Now I'm going to make a new material for this. So with materials with these geonodes trees, they're assigned in the modifier stack instead of the material stack. This is because they can be put onto the object at different points in the mesh creation process in the geometry nodes tree. And one thing I just like to do is I like to assign it to the object anyway, just so it's easily accessible from the object. And then we can start modifying it. So I'm just going to do my usual thing of making an ambient occlusion color, plugging the color into a uh, there. I'm going to make the top one yellow, so a bit goldy. And then maybe I'll do like a some kind of lightish blue in between here. And then I can adjust that ramp to bring it a bit closer to the surface. Then I'm also going to make a noise texture with another color ramp. Plug the color in here, plug the color into the roughness. Let's turn the scale up to something like 100 and then bring the black and white handles together a bit more. I'm going to make the black a bit of a brighter gray-ish so it kind of balances that out a bit. Okay, so we have an interesting dynamically created material here that changes in response to its proximity to other geometry. That's what ambient occlusion means. I bet so many of you are so bored of me having to explain ambient occlusion in all of my videos because I use it all the time. But just think about it this way. The more annoyed you are of me like having to explain ambient occlusion, the better of a fan you are because you've like watched so many other videos. Okay, so we have the material going. I'm going 
going to play with the scale of the scatter map node and see what happens here so we can get the effect kind of cascading in all strange ways. So for the sake of demonstration, why don't we make ourselves a new texture and just see what happens? Ah, what's going on? It's a different day. I'm wearing a different shirt and everything. Oh, okay. Well, let's not break the illusion. So I've had to jump ahead a bit here because I did originally record a section where we made this image in Affinity Designer, but something went wrong with the recording. And anyway, the whole point was I was going to show you how you can apply these effects to different meshes. So I'll give you a quick rundown of what's happened. So basically, if you make our own image here and then feed it into our geometry node tree, depending on the mapping node we're using, we can just have it project around any mesh we like. So it doesn't have to be the sphere. I know we were using the sphere as a demonstration object. But the beauty of procedural systems like this is that it's not restricted by a shape like that. If I go into triplanar, where we're going to get like a straight on projection from all of the major sides, you'll be able to see how elements of this image are represented around the mesh. And because this is tiling, you'll be able to see the seam lines where that's occurring. Now, depending on what you're going for, having these lines could actually be quite a good thing. So for example, if you take a look at this kind of like, you know, ancient ruin architectural block that we've got going, it's using exactly the same pattern, exactly the same node tree but because it's being projected around a cubic shape it makes sense in this case for the details to kind of be symmetrical around this. Another nice thing about projecting voxels around an object like this is that where they cut off with the corners it's not like a direct harsh cutting line and also where they're connecting they blend together perfectly as well. See that we have the rounded shape. And again, you can increase the quality level of these voxels, you know, if you play around with the quality multiplier and the other values in the node tree. So maybe to give you another quick demonstration of how you might kind of reapply this to another object, let me uh, make a Suzanne head. I feel bad using Suzanne for all of these experiments because she gets through so much experimental torture in the Blender community. All right, let me hide these other objects just to help with performance. So I'll apply the subdivision surface modifier and we go to biogen voxel surface, apply that. So we're getting some disruption and also we're getting parts of the mesh where there are two layers because as I said, the voxel works kind of on the front and the back side of where it's being created. And that helps us to get this nice kind of multi-layered effect inside these meshes here. So that, that's selected. Maybe I'll turn the radius down a little bit just to make the kind of bumps a bit less odd. So let's apply that now. So I have Suzanne selected. Let me choose my sphere, control L, copy modifiers and ta-da, it's now projecting around Suzanne. So that's an example how you can apply it to literally any mesh shape you like. And the nice thing about Biogen now is that if I wanted to take this effect and design it so I could like click on another object and apply it in one click, then I could do that perfectly fine. The only thing I would do is instead of applying the modifiers like the voxel surface one as we went, I would keep them all in the stack and then I'd put that inside of my Biogen content pack, make a thumbnail for it, give it the appropriate names, and then it will appear in here. So maybe I'll do that for this effect, you know? I mean, it looks kind of cool. I did get a request from someone asking to show them how to actually make content packs, and I should put a video about that together, but it'll probably require a bit more explaining. I anticipate maybe like a 20, 30 minute video. We'll see if I get around to it. I should probably put it on the wiki when I actually get around to doing the wiki content. We'll see how it goes. But basically that's what I wanted to demonstrate to you today. Basically like the incredible potential of these voxel systems. But I'm going to swap over files so I can have something pretty in the background while I do the outro. So yeah, there's a lot more I want to experiment with with voxels and there are loads of other systems and geometry nodes which I want to play with, especially with the incoming nodes coming in 3.1. I already have a lot of interesting ideas for that. But I thought I'd just take this opportunity to get you excited about some of the potential behind these systems. Maybe it'll inspire you with some new ideas. Ideas. So we're going to close this off now, but if you want to help support my work, then you can sign up to my Patreon, maybe follow me on social media, join our Discord server, or if you like more cognitive content and you're starting your learning journey with Blender, or maybe if you're even just a seasoned professional and want something to listen to, come on over to our second channel where I talk about a bunch of different subjects relating to creativity in Blender, like where you should start if you're a newcomer or preventing self-sabotage when you're learning new skills, why it's beneficial to take part in art challenges and the benefits of procrastination for creativity and all sorts of other stuff like that. So when the Generators Lab pack is ready for release, I'll be sure to do a video on this channel. There may be some other videos coming out before then. It's hard to predict exactly when things will be ready, but I'll be sure to let you know. And also the emoji for this video is going to be a house. So if you made it to the end, put a house in the comments so I know you made it this far so I can see who the real OG viewers are. And the reason for the house is because we finally got the keys to our new family home, which means yes, I finally now have the studio space. However, it's going to take some months before, you know, the renovation kicks in and we get it all done up and nice and modernized. So yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But yeah, thanks for watching everyone. Stay safe and I will see you next time.